Hey everyone, how's it going? The DJI Mini drones are jam-packed with awesome features, some of which you might not know about and are quite hidden, but will help you get much better drone footage and enhance your flying experience. I've put together a list of modes, features, settings and tricks which genuinely make the DJI Mini drones so much better. Let's jump right in. Alright, let's take a look at the first trick which is somewhat hidden but gives a really interesting insight into how the drone is actually flying. For this, you have to go over to the compass on the bottom left corner of the screen and you'll notice a green line splitting it in half. This line actually represents the drone's current tilt, so as the drone flies to the right, you'll notice that this line also tilts to the right. Similarly, when the drone flies to the left, this line also tilts to the left. This can also tell you how much the drone is tilting when hovering as a result of high winds. In this shot here, the line isn't centred, which means the drone is currently tilting as a result of headwind. Now just before we move away from the compass feature, I'd like to draw your attention to this blue location dot on the map. And you might be asking, what's so interesting about the location marker? Well surprisingly, this location marker can actually tell you about the signal strength between the controller and the drone. You'll notice that as you turn to face the drone head on with the controller, this blue dot will turn green. This means that the signal strength is currently optimal for the drone and has the lowest chance of disconnecting. So I know that quite a lot of beginners fly with automatic camera settings. I do recommend that you fly with pro settings, but more on that in just a minute. However, if you are flying in auto mode, you can actually change the brightness of the video during flight. To do this, just press anywhere on the screen and a yellow box will appear. On the right side of the box, a small sun icon can be found. You can drag this sun icon downwards or upwards and this will decrease or increase the brightness of the video being captured. You can also do this by pressing on EV which stands for exposure value at the bottom right of the screen. A few values will show up and basically a positive value means an increase in brightness while a negative value means a decrease in brightness. Let's take a look at how different EV values affect the captured image. So, as I've said before, I recommend flying in pro mode. This is simply because you have complete control over your shooting parameters and you can use these to make your videos seem smoother and more professional. To switch from auto to pro mode, all you've got to do is tap on the auto camera symbol in the bottom right to change modes. As you can see, you now have the option to change a few things like shutter speed and ISO. The key one you want to look at is shutter speed because this is the one that will change the way your video is being taken the most. By changing the shutter speed, you're changing the time it takes for the drone to capture one single frame of the video. If this time is very quick, like a thousandth of a second, there'll be little if any motion blur, but if it's quite slow, like one over thirty of a second, you'll have a lot of motion blur in each frame. Motion blur is when parts of the video are blurred as a result of the drone moving. Having motion blur in your videos will make them look more professional and natural because it reflects how the eye would naturally see the image. If you don't have much motion blur, the video can look jerky since the view would be jumping between each frame. Luckily, there's a really easy way to find out the optimal shutter speed for most cases. All you have to do is double your frames per second and have that value as your shutter speed. This means that if you're flying at 25 FPS, the optimal shutter speed would be 1 over 50. If you're flying at 30 FPS, it would be 1 over 60. And if you're flying at 60 FPS, it would be 1 over 120. This brings me quite nicely onto the next point of this video, ND filters. ND filters are like sunglasses for your drone, they reduce the amount of light hitting the sensor in the camera. The reason you need ND filters is so that you can change the shutter speed to your liking. You see, as you slow down the shutter speed, a lot more light will be picked up by the sensor and without a filter, this would lead to the video becoming overexposed and unusable. However, there are different types of ND filters. The higher the number on the ND filter, the less light will pass through it. So it's important that you don't just have one kind of filter. You want a variety so you can have complete control over how much light is ever hitting the camera sensor and so that you can account for varying sunlight levels. For example, if you're flying in direct sunlight, you have to use a stronger filter to counteract the increased light conditions and still be able to film with the optimal shutter speed. The next trick which not many people know about is that you can actually change the white balance when flying. 
For this, you have to be flying in pro mode and to find the white balance setting, you need to press on the general camera settings in the bottom right and then press on the slider icon. This will bring up a few settings including the white balance. By changing the white balance, you're changing how warm the video or image appears. A higher Kelvin value makes the image warmer and more red, while a lower value makes the image seem colder and more blue. Generally, your Kelvin value should stay between 5000 and 6000, but if you want to go for a unique effect or highlight a sunset for example, then you could go outside this range. Let's take a look at how the white balance actually affects an image. One more important thing to note about the white balance is that it's not a good idea to have it set to auto while flying. It's always best to set it manually and fly with the same white balance throughout the entire video. This is because if you have it set to auto, the drone will constantly be adjusting the value upwards or downwards and this can be pretty distracting and make the video seem unnatural. To disable the auto white balance, simply press on the auto button and this will then allow you to drag the slider manually. Alright, so moving away from the video settings now, we're going to go over to the camera section in the main settings. Scroll down a bit and you'll be able to see the option to turn on grid lines. Grid lines appear on the screen while flying and they act as a sort of guide when doing cinematic drone movements. There are three types of grid lines available and each are useful in their own way. You can turn on just one, two or all three depending on your preference. But why are they so useful? Well, as said before, they're an on-screen guide which helps the pilot keep the point of interest centred if doing, for example, an orbit. This will allow you to get much smoother shots when flying manually. One of the grid lines you can turn on splits the screen into nine sections by splitting the screen into thirds horizontally and vertically. You can use these third lines for composition of the image. For example, if I wanted to emphasise the sky in my shot, I would place the horizon on a lower thirds line, or if I wanted to focus more on the ground, I would keep the horizon on the upper thirds line. So you can play around with the grid lines and find which works best for you. If you've watched some of my other videos on this channel, you might remember how the Quick Shots feature is an absolute game changer for beginners. If you haven't watched that video, then I'll leave a link to it in the description below. However, there's one small issue with it, and this occurs when selecting a certain point of interest for the drone. Sometimes, if you want the drone to fly around something, the drone can misjudge where the object is located relative to itself. This can lead to the resulting video have the drone not keep the selected object centred, but instead move it around the screen while flying. Luckily, there's a way around this problem and it's not something very many people know about. When selecting a subject, instead of drawing a box around it precisely, draw the box over a much larger area of the screen but still keeping the object in the centre of that box. This will result in the drone not constantly having to track the subject while flying. It will actually place a location marker on the screen instead, which will be the reference point for the entire video. This will make the video so much smoother and you won't really have to worry about jerky quick shots footage at all anymore. So there we have it. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of these tips and tricks which you can use to improve your footage and flying experience. Which of these tricks did you find most interesting? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. If you got something out of this video, then please let me know by clicking the like button and also check out my channel for many more videos about how to get more out of your drone flights. It would be much appreciated. And if you want to see more tips and tricks in a future video, then let me know down below in the comments. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.